warm welcome to everyone here, from here and abroad, gathered together in this beautiful venue, in this magical city, in this crazy region, to listen, to share, and hopefully to be a part of a change that we hope to create. Okay. We want to have women's voices heard in an effort to progress towards the end of occupation and the end of violence in our region. That's what we're about. I'm Liat Awanson. I'm Hanan Kattan, and we're here in East Jerusalem at the American Colony. It's been 11 months that I've met Liat, and we've worked very intensively together, um, regularly, daily, weekly sometimes, for on TEDx Holy Land. What I do uh, when I'm not organizing TEDx Holy Land is run an entrepreneurship program at a small private university in Israel. We're trying to focus on women to begin with, Israeli women, Israeli Arab women, and Palestinian women. TEDx Holy Land is a small step towards trying to creates a bridge. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, because we prepaid the rooms, they need the rehearsal, but plus in the morning maybe with the checkpoints they might get delayed. I think it is a drop in the ocean, but I think that this conference will in some way, at least to the participants and all of our simulcast viewers, maybe give the impetus to get up and actually do something. I think it's the grassroots doing something that will be able to hopefully stir that bigger undercurrent in the ocean to happen. We're not unrealistic. We know we can't have peace because of Tadek Soliland, but the idea is to have small steps that will lead to bigger steps. Everything has a ripple effect. So you start with something, a concept, an idea, a thought, an imagination, and by sharing it with others, you help open new doors. Delicious, and the company was better than ever. Oh, I is a taster for tomorrow. I'm going to hear some wonderful, intelligent thoughts. I thought it was a wonderful evening. I thought the food was fantastic. And the company was even better. Cerebral, animated, and these desserts were very sweet. I'm very happy with the way the dinner went. Shattered and exhausted, but very happy with it. Exhausted, yes. That's the real for me, it was also very special when we chose the Pasha room. My grandfather is a Pasha, was a Pasha. And uh, having that room, it's kind of, when we went and saw it the first time, Liet and I, and they said, it's the Pasha room, and it just kind of resonated, especially that I wanted to mention my grandfather. So it was wonderful for me. Working with Hanan has been absolutely one of the more amazing experiences of personal dynamics for me. I think um, in my naivety, I went into this project not considering how complex it would be, how politically volatile, how much work there would be, how many sensitive issues would come up. Liat is really an incredible person. I've learned a lot of things from her. She is um, very kind and gentle. She's very patient and she is excellent at detail and organization and getting people to, to follow through and to, um, to motivate. Okay, you want me to describe Hanan in three words? Fireball of energy. She's also got the biggest heart I've ever seen, the biggest passion, and there is something about her that is a, a core of true friendship. I was late. Um, the only seat available was like right next to the back. So I sat down, talked to the to the one woman who I actually knew from pre-conference stuff, and then I turned around to, to be polite and say hi. And the first person that I turned around and said hello to was Hanan. And, and that it wasn't even one year ago. In November, exactly. Wow. Yes. Here's the next one. Yeah, sure. I think it's important to try to 
to bridge, to do something outside ourselves because it inspires, it motivates. I mean, it happened to me. And I think what happened, having gone through a few TEDs, it, it, it brings you, you see these incredibly inspirational speakers who are doing amazing things with their lives. And it, it elevates you. And we hope to do that at TEDx Holy Land to the speakers between themselves, with the audience, um, and with the rest of the world who are watching on uh, streaming and simulcast and so on. If you would have asked me this before, I think I'd probably say, you know, getting the production right and having the right speakers with the right, you know, camera equipment in the right venue. But I think in hindsight, or not in hindsight, but in, in the middle of a site, I can say that I think the most important thing is actually the team dyma dynamic. And it's Hanan and I working together and then that trickling through to all of our team. But our team member, Yael, uh, who's um, in charge of production, was really um, said it beautifully in that actually what happened at TEDx Holy Land was very important, but what happened behind the scenes, behind the scenes of TEDx Holy Land is probably even more important, if not just as important. I think when Liat and I did our introductions, and uh, once Dalia, our first speaker, um, did her talk and observing the audience, looking at their reaction to see how they were responding or not to, to her talk, I knew straight away that they were engaged, they were moved, they were inspired by her talk, they were there, they really understood, I think, what we're trying to do. But I was so overwhelmed by the emotion when, uh, when it ended and it was such a relief on the one hand and just um, complete sort of um, being on a high on another, um, on another level. Well, it was a fantastic day. I learned a lot. It's one of those moments where people come together and suddenly they find a safe space to really talk and talk very openly and seeing these women on stage talking so openly about the situation that's delicate, sensitive, very hard for many uh, was awesome.